Good day viewers, I'm Okocha Happy Marcel and this is my channel. After a few hours, CBN Governor Emefinde was suspended. DSS arrested him. Well, that is not the issue. But the question is, who is going to arrest the MD of Nigerian Air? Who is going to arrest Professor Yakubu Mahmoud, the INEC chairman? Obviously, what Yakubu Mahmoud did is far more dangerous than what Emefinde did. It is obvious that INEC chairman inflicted more pains on Nigerians. Yes, INEC chairman has done what nobody has even done to the detriment or to the existence of this country, Nigeria. What INEC chairman did, he violated the law. He intentionally, after telling Nigerians that there is no going back to beavers, this and that, but he came up with different stories. And day before yesterday, I just want to show you this video. The INEC representatives on the meeting they had the day before yesterday about the people that observed the election, INEC have accepted that they did wrong. My question is, who is going to arrest Yakubu Mamo? Take your time and watch this video. I have a copy of the report. Um, I have not gone through the report. I will take a copy of the report back to the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission and the National Commissioners uh, for them to read the report and digest issues in the report. From our own point of view, in the next few weeks, the Commission will begin comprehensive review and evaluation of the 2023 general election. After every major election, the Commission conducts both internal and external review and evaluation of both the conduct and management of elections. Uh, so we are in the process of finalizing on that. Civil society groups and organizations will be a major plank of this review. Political parties will be a major plank of this review. The National Union of Road Transport Workers will be a major plank of this review. All our electoral officers will be a major plank of this review. And collation and returning officers will also be a plank of this particular review. Uh, so that review will take place in the next few weeks. We are finalizing on that particular review. Secondly, I will, I'm slightly constrained uh, commenting on some of the issues that have been raised uh, because some of the issues that have been raised here will be part of the review process that the Commission will carry out. Not only that, some of the issues that have been raised here are part of the issues before the various election petition tribunals and also part of the issues before the presidential election tribunal. Uh, so I will find it very, very difficult to comment on some of the issues that have been raised. But let me say this, that one, as civil society groups and organizations, we have a responsibility to remain nonpartisan no matter the interests at stake. We, have, we owe that to the Nigerian people and we owe that to the society at large. Before the 2023 general election, Individuals, groups, and political parties claim victory for an election that had not taken place. Let me repeat that before the 2023 general elections, individuals, groups, organizations, and political parties claimed victory for an election that had not taken place. So when the elections took place, they wanted a validation of what they had already made up their minds should be. And some of us within the civil society groups and organizations lent credence to this particular perception, and that created a lot of challenges. My third issue is that we still need a lot of education on the collation and resort management process within the law within the ambit of the law. Because some of us in civil society groups and organizations who did not have a good knowledge of the election collation process and resort management process also assisted in making sure that people did not have good knowledge. And because some people didn't have good knowledge of the collation and resort management process, they went to town and reduced the entire conduct and management of the 2020 regional election to resort upload. 
And I believe that we cannot, under any circumstance whatsoever, and not under any guise, reduce the entire election only to resolve management or, or resolve upload. So if there was no problem with the senatorial election, and there was no problem with the election to the House of Representatives, there was no problem with the governorship election, there was no problem with the state assembly elections, you, you cannot then write off the entire election as a sham. So I think, I think that we, when we are sober, when we reflect much, much properly, we will find out that there are a lot of positives to take away from this election. Most of us have not seen people complaining about beavers being, having malfunction in several places. Rather, people said that the beavers performed optimally. So if beavers perform optimally, what that means is that the, the, the accreditation process was, was top-notch. Now, results, election results are announced at the polling unit level. Over, over seven political parties applied for accreditation for their polling agents or party agents. And they deployed to over 170,000 polling units. So what that means is that in all the places where they deployed, they were entitled to a copy of from EC8A, which is the pooling unit level result. So before you can begin to reduce the entire election to result upload, you must also compare what you have from your party agents at the pooling unit level with what, was, what has been uploaded. It is when you have contradiction and when you have challenges with that that you can begin to write off the electoral process. So I think that we need to soberly and rationally reflect on the 2023 general elections. And when we do, you will find out that never in the history of elections in Nigeria have sitting governors, sitting governors, lost senatorial elections, which is one third of a state a, of, of, the, of the voting strength in a state. On the issue of, um, on the issue of electoral offenders, in the next few days, uh, the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission will address the nation on the issue of electoral offenders. Uh, so I'm, I don't want to um, say anything on that. The chairman will address the nation any moment from now on the issue of, um, of, of, of electoral offenders. Um, I completely agree that we need to look at the work that the Commission does. The Chairman of the Commission went to the National Assembly and canvassed that Nigeria must have an Electoral Offenses Commission and Tribunal to deal with the issue of electoral offenders. Till now, that has not been given vent to. So the Commission does not have anything against the unbundling of certain aspects of our work so that we can become more efficient and so that we can become more professional. But in the main, we must also know and agree that elections are conducted by Nigerians. The total staff strength in the commission is less than 15,000. For the 2023 general election, the commission deployed over 1.5 million ad hoc staff. These ad hoc staff are Nigerians. These are core members. These are students in federal tertiary institution, institutions in their penultimate year. So it is unlikely that on election day, you will see an INEX staff who is a permanent staff in any police unit. So it's Nigerians who are the ones who conduct elections. So in analyzing and looking at the 2023 general election, we must look at the context and environment of the election. We must look at the context and environment of the election. There were so many polling units where the commission could not deploy on account of security challenges. So many of our staff were killed during, even during the CVR process. The commission has been mandated constitutionally and legally to organize, undertake, and supervise election. The responsibility of pro protecting the electoral environment does not rest with the Commission. 
So I think that there, is, there are a lot of positives from the election. We, there are also challenges from the election. Based on those challenges, we are going to look at the reports from domestic and international election observers. We are also going to re look at reports from political parties. We're also going to look at reports from our own electoral officers, from coalition officers, and returning officers. And we are going to see whether there are issues and things that we can deal with administratively, and we deal with those ones. We can also see whether there are still issues that demand both legal and constitutional change or, 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 or reform. Then we will go before the appropriate organ of government and deal with those ones. But I want on behalf of the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission to commend civil society groups and organizations on the work that was done around the 2020 regional election. And I believe that on no account, on no account must we give up on this country. It is because people expected a finished product. Democracy is not a finished product. People expected a finished product. That was why there were a lot of disappointments. But if we believe that the electoral process must continue to increase incrementally, we will not write off an entire electoral process. Because the moment, the moment you write off the electoral process, the moment you write off democracy, what we are now saying is that anti-democratic forces should come and take over. And that can never be part of our docket. So I want to commend uh, my sister, uh, Enobi who is uh, completing her tenure, I'm going to deploy our staff to monitor the civil society elections. <laughs> Be Beavers, Beavers will be deployed for purposes of voter accreditation and verification, and then there will be result upload after this election. Ah. So <laughs> the plea is that we never, never give up on this country, and we should never give up on democracy.